Occasionally it's necessary to create numbers that increment for each segment. In this tips and tricks episode we look at two ways to create sequences of numbers. In the first example we'll illustrate how to create a series of numbers by cycling through geometry. In the second we manipulate a segment's material IDs to create numbers using multi sub object materials. If you want to follow along with this tutorial open countingstart.max. Railclone is not able to access the parametric properties of the source geometry directly, so to build this style it's necessary to create 10 number meshes that will be switched as the segment count increases. In this scene, to save a bit of time, there's already a rail clone object. If we open the style editor, you can see there's a simple linear array, a spline which is attached, and the 10 numbers already imported as segments. First of all, we want to create a sequence. To so drag in a sequence operator and connect the numbers from 0 to 9. With that done we need to create a new sequence operator for each digit in the number you wish to create. So if the number is never going to go larger than hundreds for example we'll only need three sequence operators. So hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V to clone them. And a third time. We're going to rename this first one 100s, second one 10s and the third one 1s. Wire all of these to a new Compose operator to combine them into one segment. Hundreds first, then tens, and then ones. Then wire the Compose operator into the evenly input. You can see we've got the numbers now ready, but they're not counting as they should. This is because each of these numbers is currently counting each segment position. So what we want to do is for the tens to only increase once ten digits or once ten numbers have been counted off. And the easiest way to do that is just to come into the counters here and just increase each of these values to ten. Now you can see that's working. And then finally with the hundreds you need to change all of these values to a hundred. And it's as easy as that to create counting numbers using geometry. In the next example, we want to do the same thing, but instead of using geometry, try switching the material IDs. This segment here has three polygons. Each one's been mapped to an individual number, and each has a different material ID, which you can see down here. This is one, this is two, and this is three. On the material side, if we open up the material editor, we're going to use this material here, which has ten material IDs with zero to nine in the input slots, one to ten. If you're creating an object that has other materials required, I would put them after the 10 slot and reserve this range for the number counts. And to illustrate that, I've just put an 11th material on into the multi sub object material, although it won't be used. So, what we need to do now is to convert the segment's count along the spline into a material ID that represents these numbers. Once again, some of the work's been done already, so let's open this rail clone object. And in here, we've just got this simple plane and a linear array with a single spline. So we need to target each one of these different material IDs in turn. And to do that we need an equivalent amount of material operators. So here's material operator for the material ID 1, material operator for the material ID 2, and a third one for the material ID 3. And you can wire these together in sequence wire the final material ID into the default input in this case and then we'll wire the geometry into the other end. So in order to be able to control these material IDs programmatically let's export the from and the to for all of them. And then just to make things a little clearer let's explain what these are. So material ID 1 is your hundreds. This one here is the tens this one is the ones. So let's get the ones counting first of all. If we bring in a new arithmetic node and change the operation type to expression and open the expression editor. We can use a variable here which is segments segment x counter. And this counts the current segment number along the x-axis. If we wire this into the from and the to hit update you can see now it's counting one two three four 
all the way up to 9. And when it gets to 10, we've got a problem because, of course, there might be more than 10 material IDs. And now this has gone up to 11. So what we need to do is keep it in the range 1 to 10. We can do this using modulo. So if we enter mod, then a bracket, then segment x counter, comma, 10, close bracket. And what this does is it divides segment x counter by 10, and then it returns the uh, remainder. So you'll always end up with a number that's between 1 and 10. Let's update that. Now see another problem. You get 8 twice. And that's because this equation will occasionally return 0 when 10 is divided by 10. But in material IDs, there is no 0. You can't have a 0 material ID. So to get around that, we just add 1. And then we get 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, and it starts counting again. And now it's going to cycle endlessly around the 1 to 10 range. So for the 10s, we can use a similar equation. Just hit Control and V to copy the arithmetic node, wire it into the from and the two inputs of the 10s material operator, click on the arithmetic operator, the new one, and edit the expression. And this time, we need to make sure that this is only returning the number of 10s that can be found in the X count. So all we do is, so after segment X counter, divide by 10, and hit update. So now, it will get to 8, 9, and then 10, because at this point there's one 10. 10, 10, and if it goes on for long enough, it will add up to 20 at that point too. So then finally, for the hundreds, the same thing again, just copy and paste that, plug it into the from and the to, open the edit expression, and this time divide by 100. Update and OK. So if we wanted this to start at a different number from zero, it's an easy case of coming into these arithmetic operators, coming into edit expression, and just adding a number after the segment X counter. If you've got a divide in there too, you may need to add extra brackets to make sure they evaluate in the correct order. Like that. So now you can see the number starts at 323, three, and it gives us a sense of whether the uh, hundreds are working as well, and they are. This tutorial outlined techniques for creating counting numbers on a linear array. For a more advanced implementation of the same technique being used to count the segments on a two-dimensional array, see the lockers.max file that comes with the downloads for this tutorial. In the meantime, stay tuned for future training on expressions, or for more information about many aspects of RailClone's features, please see our reference section, visit the tutorials page, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.